there's actually science behind setting too many goals versus setting like one or potentially two goals. Hey guys, welcome back to Builder Funnel TV. I'm Spencer Powell, and in this video, we are gonna talk about how to grow your contracting business by 40% or more. And what I really wanna dive into is not necessarily marketing and sales topics, which is maybe where you thought I was gonna go with this, but we are actually gonna talk about having a business process. Now, over the years, I've tried a number of different processes, anywhere, anywhere from you know traction in the EOS system to four disciplines of execution, which is what I'm gonna talk about, one core concept from that uh, today, and this is something that we implemented here at Builder Funnel, and it worked like magic. And so I wanna walk you through kind of what we learned, a couple of the key takeaways, where I've made some missteps in the past, and how you can use this concept to rapidly grow your business this year. All right, so let's talk about the concept. So this comes from, again, four disciplines of execution. Uh, if you want the book, we'll put a link to it below. Um, but we're, what we're gonna talk about is kind of this concept of the wig and then leads and lags. So you start out with a company wig or wildly important goal. Now this is really critical. So if you think about goal setting, most of the time, if you're like me, you're an idea person and you have lots of goals and you wanna go after all of them. So you're just chasing like, oh, I wanna do these for marketing, these for sales, these for systems improvement. And you got all these different goals and there's actually science behind setting too many goals versus setting like one or potentially two goals. If you set three, four, five, six goals, you actually end up completing fewer goals than if you just set one or maybe two goals. And it's because you make progress towards those five or six goals. So maybe you get 50% of the way there on all of them, but you actually don't end up completing any of them. Whereas if you just set one goal, you're much more likely to achieve that goal. And so that's something that is super difficult for me because I like goals, I like having them, and I like having lots of them, honestly. And so I tend to overcommit to lots of different things and I think I'll do them all. And so what the concept of the wildly important goal or the WIG is that it forces you to say, what is the most important thing if all the other goals, I maybe got part of the way there, I didn't achieve them, I still would be happy if I hit this one single goal. And that took a little bit of time to figure out what was the right wig for our company. And so uh, we used a customer number. We said, hey, uh, we wanna be at this many customers by the end of the year. And for our business, we did that because it corresponds to two things. One is new customer acquisition, so adding customers. And then the second one is retention. Because we work with customers ongoing, that is a core component. So we ended up with a total customer number, and that was influenced by new sales as well as retaining customers. Now, for you guys watching, you're all contractors, remodelers, builders, you're going to be, you wouldn't have that retention component, most likely. And so you're going to have a wig that looks a little bit different, and it might be a sales number, it might be a number of projects. Um, you might have a certain project size or a certain margin you're going after. And so you'll have to do some of that heavy lifting in figuring out what is the most important thing to your company. And you may have all these sub goals and different things, but remember, you can only pick one. And so pick one wildly important goal. And then from there, we're going to start breaking that down. So the next part of the process is figuring out, okay, now that we've got our company wig, what can everyone on the team do to influence that goal? What can they do? And not just what can they do, you know, every once in a while or monthly, what can they do every single week to make progress towards that goal? And so that's where the concept of a lead measure comes in. We're going to talk about lead measures and lag measures. Now, lag measures are the goals. They're the sub goals, they're the milestones. So that would be, hey, I want to sell three projects this month. That would be a lag measure. So that's something that happens and you report on after the fact and you can't really influence it anymore. So let's say, you know, it's the middle of the year and you say, I wanna close three projects in June and you get to the end of the month and you close two projects. 
Now you're reporting on that after the fact. So that's a lag. And you're saying, well, I didn't hit my goal. It's a little too late to influence that now because that time has passed. You hit the two projects. You didn't hit the three. And it also doesn't give you any insight or direction as to what you're going to do to land those two projects. And so that's where the concept of the lead measure comes into play, which is uh, kind of the leading indicator of what am I going to do week to week to make progress towards that goal, which is the lag measure. So if it, again, was uh, projects and you said, hey, my lag measure is three projects sold this month, then my lead measure needs to be something that will contribute to that. So maybe it's I'm going to call on five past customers every single week. And then maybe you have another lead measure of I'm going to email our database uh, every single week uh, with a touch point email so that I can stay in front of our contacts. Um, maybe a lead measure is I'm going to hire uh, somebody and they are going to run around and canvas uh, 100 homes every week or something like that. Uh, but that lead measure has to be something that you can check the box on. It has to be uh, something that you can complete and you can control. Whereas something like the lag measure, which is three sales or three projects, you can't always control that. You know, sometimes it'll happen, sometimes it won't. Uh, but at the end of the day, you can control the lead measures. So what we do as a team, this is what we did here at Builder Funnel, is you take that wig and then you break it down. You go, what are all the things that influence the wig in the varying roles across the company? So somebody that's in sales, they can influence sales, but maybe somebody that's in uh, production, well, they can influence, you know, project timelines and, you know, did they hit their numbers and do you end up with the right margin? And so it's important that that wig encompasses things that everybody can influence in one way or another. So again, for our team, it was either new sales or retention. Everybody can affect one of those two things and then we're striving for those targets. And so every week, your entire team has at least two uh, lead measures and things that they're doing that they can check the box on and say, yep, I did those two things. We call them strategic bets. And that means we think that these two things that I picked are going to influence and end up at the lag uh, and the goal. And so for us, uh, we made uh, these boards and you kind of keep a scoreboard and that helps people keep, uh, keep each other accountable. And then you can also theme it out. So for us, uh, we did taco theme because we like tacos around here. Um, so let's get this board open. So we had our uh, hot sauce bottle here. We were trying to add clients and retain clients. And then this is really where the magic happens, which is the scoreboard. So all of our team members here, and then we had tacos were our lead measures. So if you did one of your things on a weekly basis, you got a taco. If you didn't, you got a red X. And then we basically scored at the bottom hey, as a team, how often were we uh, completing, like what percentage of the time were we completing our lead measures? And not everyone is going to get them every week, um, but the goal is that you keep the focus on it every single week and you strive for 100%. And then if everyone's operating in that, you know, 85, 90, 95% as a whole, doing your lead measures, and if you've made good strategic bets that those things will influence the lags and the wig, there's a really good shot that you will hit your wildly important goal. Uh, I recommend having fun with it. Again, we did taco themed, um, but most importantly, I recommend sticking to the process. Now I've tried lots of these business structures over the years and I find that you start out the year, everyone's excited, and then it kind of falls off track after three or four months. And it's just because you stopped asking about it or you stopped focusing on it. And so what the scoreboard does is that it actually allows everyone to stay focused. And then the weekly things mean that you can check in on it regularly, right? So if it's monthly, stuff kind of tends to get forgotten, but it's like, man, this week I got to do these two critical things because those are going to move our company forward. Everything else is just the whirlwind, the chaos of the day. I'll get that stuff done, but I've got to do these two other things. So I can say after a year of doing this, this worked fantastically. We more than hit our wildly important goal. We kind of blew past that in, I would say, the 11th month. And then the 12th month, we kind of went above and beyond. And we ended up growing more than 40% last year. So I highly, highly recommend using a business process. But again, the couple of, the couple of critical components here. Have a wildly important goal. 
pick good lead measures, things that you can do every week that influence it. And then third, stay focused. That was the piece uh, that really made the difference is everyone's focused on it every single week. It never gets forgotten. It's a top priority all the time. And again, it's a little bit easier to do that when you just have one wildly important goal. All right, hopefully that helped. Hopefully that gave you some inspiration. Again, we'll drop the link to the whole book for Disciplines of Execution below, but that was really the core concept and kind of little system there that enabled us to really stick to the plan and then put us on a really, really strong growth path. All right, guys, we'll see you next time here on Builder Funnel TV.